everyone, it's time for tonight's episode of Find Your Fairy Tale, where we talk about trying to live your best life, achieve your dreams, and slay those dragons. Tonight's guest is young adult author and blogger Rectoc Ross. Uh, Rectoc Ross is also known as Liani Kutcher, and she has quite the story. She went from being a lawyer, a trial attorney, to being a young adult writer. Uh, you might know her for her uh, novel, um, it is what, Prodigal. I have not read that one yet, but it is on my list, and guess what's coming up next? Ski Weekend. So we want to talk to her about books and everything in between, because she and I realized we have quite a bit in common, even though we've never met. The amazing thing about Find Your Fairy Tale is I reach out to people who seem to be blazing their own way, not necessarily following a, a set path, not necessarily sticking to what they, they did day one. And so some of these people I've met in, in real life, some of them are friends, some of them acquaintances, and some, it's only because I have reached out to them and, and asked them to be a guest. So I'm very excited because once I started reading up on, on RecDoc, I realized that we had a lot of, of loves in common. We loved running around the library as kids, bookstores, and we could. We love our dogs. We love to travel. We love fashion. We love laughing. We love people. And we like to pay it forward by sharing what we know in our other careers with our fellow writers. Hi there. Hello, how are you? I am doing great. Thank you for joining us from the West Coast. Thank you for having me. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Loud and clear. Oh you look great. You sound great. And you actually grew up in Florida. Not Tampa per se, but I grew up in Boston, but this is home now. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm a Florida girl. So I, um, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Uh, Davey, I don't know if people listening, I know you're in Tampa, but so South Florida, Davey Cooper City. I went to Cooper City High School. I went to uh, University of Florida. Go get there you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there it is. And you went to law school. You became a lawyer. But that was the, the beginning of your journey. Take us through a little bit of how you went from being a lawyer to where you are today. Yeah, sure. So I'm like trying to adjust this screen. I feel like all you see is my, my little head. You know what's funny is when it, <laughs> when it jumps the two of us, you frame it up for a, your yourself right yeah and then it jumps the two of us and it's like yeah I know I feel like I'm like squatted down but um so I actually I always wanted to write I've always loved writing ever since I was a little girl I remember like my mom used to take my mom as a uh, elementary school teacher yeah so she stayed in the library I would like sit there all day and write little stories in my little Lisa Frank journal um and I took writing classes in high school I actually maybe similar to you, I was a journalism major at yeah. Florida. And um, I, I really fell in love with writing and with also film when I was in college. But my family, like I didn't come from the kind of background where we could really afford to just go off and like live our dreams and go to New York City, yeah. and write, like carry and sex in the city. So my family actually pushed me to, you know, go get a real job which I don't know if other people on. Yeah, no, I think well that that's that same pressure. That's something that we talk about a lot is what is what is the real job and how does that fit in with the real passion? Because that's yeah. the whole point. You say find your fairy tale. The fairy tale sometimes doesn't seem like it matches with the ability to pay the bills and support a family and yeah. you know actually have something steady. So it's not for lack of of people wanting you to to pursue your passion it's that security right yeah no for sure and like you know growing up we didn't have a lot of money so my my family was like very concerned about that like you're gonna have to take care of yourself we don't have like yeah. funds for you. i mean i paid through college and law school on my own with student loans so there was a lot of pressure to like go get my degree go to and especially back like I'm an 80s baby so back then especially for women it was like you know you go get a job you go get an education you go to college you go to law school and you do like a real job so it's very different now and I'm so excited about I've got stepkids like the future yeah. now I feel like we live in the golden age of being a creative there's so much opportunity but back when I was coming up it wasn't like that and so did the whole like career path and I'm very grateful to it there was a lot of incredible experiences that I had practicing law, but it was like always deep inside me. I knew that I wanted to go back to writing. And so actually after about my fourth year of practicing, I wound up um, getting permission 
from my senior associate to take classes. I went to us. I was in Dallas at the time. Yeah. I went to Southern Methodist University. I went to like their night school. Okay. So I took writing classes for two years and learned how to write creatively. And then I wrote my first book and um, it did okay. It didn't do so great. It did okay. Um, and, but I kept writing. I just loved it. I was bit by the bug. And then I actually wound up quitting my job about two years ago. So now I'm writing full time and blogging and, and, and that to many, to many fellow writers, I'm sure that is the fairy tale. Was yeah. that always uh, your definition of a happily ever after? Is this where you see yourself kind of going and growing and developing from now on? I mean, I don't see myself going back to a law firm full time for sure. I definitely do not miss that lifestyle at all. But um, I think for me, the future, what's always been in my heart has been just storytelling as a whole and maybe even like on the bigger picture. So writing books, I would love to eventually get into producing. So whether that's like my own books or I've also written a screenplay with my brother a long time ago. Uh, I've always, I actually interned at Miramax when I was a uh, baby lawyer. So baby always, lawyer. <laughs> That's so funny forms. you say baby. I used to, I call my, my early experiences in news. I say back when I was a baby reporter, I say the baby same thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Same terminology. But um, yeah, I, I love, so I, I really see myself doing eventually books to movies, other broad storytelling. Um, I'm really fascinated by YouTube. Yeah. Although I say that I get really nervous on live video and stuff. I still enjoy like the creation aspect. So I could see myself doing something YouTube related as well. But because you really love your community. Let's, let's talk a little bit about how much that can help. If you're doing kind of a, a, a switch, you know, you went from, like you said, you, you were this child of the 80s where there wasn't that much room to build a platform because what platforms were there? There was you know? no Instagram. Yeah, there was no Instagram. There was no YouTube. I mean, I no. remember dial up modems and AOL and you know, that was that. But it's, there's so many more possibilities and places to yeah. put your art, whether it's photography or you're just trying your hand at some comedy, you know, from, from TikTok to YouTube, you can just sort of put it out in the world as yeah. a little trial run. What's your advice on, on how to do that if you want to switch careers like you did? Yeah, so I actually, it's funny, I think this is incredible. I'm actually in a group of female entrepreneurs. So I said, 2020, okay, it's been a terrible year in a lot of ways, but mm -hmm. for me, it's been a huge year of personal growth. And I said at the start of this year that I was going to invest in myself. And people say that in like a hokey way, but I'm yeah. very sincere about it. Like, this was the year, I like, you and I have talked about this offline, like, I like clothes, I like fashion, I love all that stuff. But I said this year, like, I'm not going to do that. This year, I'm going to take my money and I'm going to do online courses. I'm going to find a coach. I'm going to do a mastermind. I'm going to go to conferences. And before COVID hit, I actually <laughs> wanted to doing a lot of that. Yeah. And so we talk about this in my women's group a lot. Like, how do you, how do you get yourself out there? And a lot of the girls in my group, we actually talk on, on Fridays about what we're going to do. And we talk about like, how do you, how do you, a lot of them still do have their day jobs. Right. So right. how do you transition? Like, how do you do one foot in the door and one foot? Um, in the world of dreams or your fairy tale. And, you know, it's really incredible people have been able to do. Like, for example, I pulled up, I, I'm going to say her name wrong, but she's a super famous poet. It's like R Rumi Kapoor, or I can't, I'm going to say it wrong. But mm, I know who you mean. She, she actually got famous. You, you talked about the platform of, uh, of Instagram. She made yes. Instagram poetry yes. a thing yes. with her so awesome... Yeah, I think Rumi Kapoor, and she had yeah. um, the little line drawings, oh, and she, she would had... write these tight little verses that just, ah, uh, get you in the heart, the gut, yes. the soul. Yes, yes. She, she kind of blazed the way in a whole different style of poetry. So we talk about this on, on, um, on our calls. A lot of the girls also yeah. want to be writers. And we talk about people say, well, you know, I, don't, I want to be a, a memoirist. Like, people are not, I don't think there's an audience better. I want to be a poet, you know, notoriously poets don't have the same audience or marketability as a fiction author, right? But now with Instagram, it's really amazing how you can break into that and find yeah. your people. So she was able, she's got like 5 million followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. She was able to get a huge following, her book deals, all of that. And literally, if you look at her feed, it's not like some beautifully cultivated aesthetic. It's literally screenshots of her poetry, of her verses. So yeah. the ability now to do that, to get out in front of the people that you, re you know, resonate with what you're doing creatively. 
Yeah, and I think it's, you, you hit on something too. She just put it out there. If you put yep. yourself out there, and in many ways, you know, you're doing that too in terms of blogging and, and whether you're doing, you know, a fun dance with your daughter or holding up the books that you love, you know? Yeah. It's, it's about being willing to be vulnerable in many ways to be able to find the, the tribe that will help you achieve that fairy tale, you know? Yeah, so I'm, I'm a huge believer in finding a tribe and a community. I found a lot of amazing people on, we call it like Bookstagram, which you yeah. know because you're a YA author. So I found an amazing community on Instagram. People have been incredibly supportive, um, very nurturing, very helpful. Uh, not to rag on Twitter, but it's not, I don't have the same I don't think it's not the same warm same. fuzzy. No, <laughs> it's not the same warm fuzzy. As, so I would say, no. I feel like people go to Twitter to yell and yes. then you go to Instagram to see something pretty to feel better. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like so I, I saw say, the shouting. I would say my advice in uh, Instagram for sure. If you're creative, I think Instagram is a very supportive place mm -hmm. to be. Um, at Twitter, I'm on it because I'm a writer and I feel like you should be on it just to know what's going yeah. on, but I don't recommend Twitter for building a community personally. I think it's a great place to meet people if there's someone that you like specifically want to contact, maybe if you're writing and you need a blurb or if mm -hmm. you're looking for someone as a mentor or a critique group or something like that. If you want to specifically target someone, uh, not like in a stalker way, that sounds stalkery, but <laughs> if you if you want to connect, Twitter's a great place to do that, but I yeah. don't recommend it for community. I love Instagram for community. Um, and then the other thing, and I'll give a shout out to a couple of mentors that I've worked with. Yeah. So Julie Solomon is one and Jennifer Kem is another. And they always say, take messy action. And my friend Marilee mm. also says this as well in our Friday conversations. But I think that's probably my number one top advice to creatives. If you're looking to make the jump or you still want to do one foot in, one foot out, whatever you're doing, it's take messy action. Like you can't just sit back and wait for it to be perfect. If you're a perfectionist or type A like I am, and I know you probably are as well, mm -hmm. you can sit all day for years and never put anything out there because you're so worried it's not perfect, but it's never going to be perfect. I so love it. Take do messy it. action. You know what? You are hanging out on a show that is messy action. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, it's an idea, you know, that that I think because it's one of those pandemic silver linings in a way, I think that I probably would have overthought the production and wanted it to be perfect and wanted it to be well lit and audio and everything yeah. fancy fancy because I'm used to a highly produced newscast when really I think what people need um, right now especially is honesty and just people being themselves and not trying too hard and hanging out because we're all you know working from home in our pajama pants and professional from the waist up so it's like we need we need that exhale and this I think is now a more yeah. accepted way of hanging out yeah I agree authenticity for sure yeah community. community yeah and and you find that community by putting yourself out there and and making making that messy first attempt at your yeah. art um, yeah. Were you nervous when you when you first published, when you first started even blogging, that feeling of, will people like me? What happens if they don't? Uh, I, you are being vulnerable. So what were your dragons that you had to slay in that sense to step out of yeah. something that you knew and out of that safety zone of, I am an attorney. That is a good job. That will pay yeah. the bills. And I, and I did it. I love the dragon slaying metaphor. It goes along very well with the fairy tale. Um, I, uh, you know, huh, so I actually wasn't as nervous to put my book out there the first yeah. one because I was still at my law firm. Mm -hmm. and so I was still one foot in one foot out. And so it was like, Thank yeah, you. there's an ego aspect, right? If this doesn't do well and it didn't do, I mean, I got great reviews. People really liked it, but it like didn't blow up or anything. Um, it wasn't really that big of a deal. Like I wasn't trying to pay for my house or the roof over mm -hmm. my head. Now. So it was more of like an ego thing. Do people like this? Do they not? Is it a bestseller? No, it's not. Okay. Am I still going to write? Yes, I am. For me, the real like come to Jesus, if you will, was actually leaving my law firm. That was so huge for me. And I know from talking to other people in like the writing community that actually taking that leap of faith and leaving the paycheck to go follow your dream is what really scares people. And that's what scared me the most. And there was 
so much tied into it. It was financial security. It was the identity. My whole life, it, you know, who am I? I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Every, you know, outing I went to, what are you? I'm a lawyer. Right. You know, like every instruction, this is my friend Leonie. She's a lawyer at blank, blank, blank. You know, like everything about me was, this is what I am. I worked really hard for this. This is how I proved to people immediately, like, oh, I'm, I'm intelligent. I'm hardworking. You can take me seriously because I'm a lawyer, right? So if I'm not that, if I'm not a lawyer, what am I? And it was really hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that I didn't need that, that I could have the self-confidence to just be who I am and say I'm a writer. That, that's how did I, you I find have to qualify it? Yeah, how did you find that self-confidence? Um, so this is actually really funny. I'm not like a super touchy-feely emotional person. I'm like very type A, very like, this is how we do things. And uh, I have a girlfriend. A very lawyer of you. A very lawyery, <laughs> very lawyery. Um, and I, I have a friend who's a life coach. And we talked about this when it was happening. My brother actually is a life coach too, random. But, and they both were like, I think you need coaching. And I was so resistant. Like, no, yeah. I don't need coaching. Like, I'm a professional. I don't need like to sit on a couch and someone to tell me like, you're good enough, you're smart enough. Like, I don't need that, that's crazy. But I actually did need it. And Interesting. Um, yeah. And that, that's what gave me the push. I actually worked through it with my girlfriend and also my brother. We did a bunch of coaching sessions. It took me about three or four months to like change that part of my mind and wrap my head around that I didn't need that. And that, you know, I need to go after what I want. Life's short. And what are some of the takeaways from that? What do you think? I mean, let's let's um let's borrow your coaching. We'll just uh we'll we'll yeah. ride off of that a little bit. Yeah, you know, some of it was financial, right? So some of it was actually we crunched numbers. So it yeah, was how to see what's saved. feasible. What's feasible? How much have you saved? How long can you actually realistically go um, without having a paycheck? So some of it was numbers related and actually just, you know, putting that money away. Yeah. Planning. And living off of it. Um, but for me, the majority really was mindset. And I think, I don't know if there was like a special magic word, because if there was something like that, I think I would have been able to like flip the switch a lot quicker. Yeah. It really did take like three or four months, but it was just constantly hearing it over and over, hearing her, her name's Hillary, her telling me over and over, like, this is what you need to be doing. This is what you feel most passionately about. If you die today, like, what would you most regret in life? And for me, it was very easy. Like, I would regret not publishing more books. I'd regret not taking a shot at getting one of my books made into a movie. Like, that would be my biggest regret. And so it just was like wrapping my head around, like, this is time. If not, you know, now, then when? And there wasn't like a magic silver bullet, but it was just repeatedly working on it. Yeah, it, just so asking like, the questions about what matters the most to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and the other thing too, it's kind of funny, and I've heard this from other like Tony Robbins and other motivated, mm -hmm. motivational people, but it's kind of like, what's, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? I mean, this did, so there was a comfort level here and maybe other people on the live will relate, but I did have this degree, right? So the comfort level was, if I go up and I do this for a year or two years, I've got the financial security because I've saved the money. What's the worst thing that could happen? So let's say it's a huge flop and I, I'll run out of all my money while I still have this marketable skill and I can go back. Like the world hasn't ended. There's still lawyers that, you know, have jobs and I still had all the contacts. So worst case scenario, I felt like there was somewhere to go back to. So I think wrapping, you know, kind of figuring that out and, and sitting on that also helped. Take that's really lead. interesting, though. I think that that's key is that you asked the questions and, and you identified your passion, but then you created a very concrete plan. And in a yeah. way, you almost gave yourself a deadline by saying, what's the worst yeah. that can happen? You said, well, what's the worst that can happen in a certain time frame? Yeah. So in a way that made that leap less scary because it gave you a, a way to retreat yeah. in a certain time frame. Yeah, you know what else I did too? And so now you're now you're jogging my memory because it's a while ago, but she also had me make a list of people to talk to um, for the job security issue. Basically, like I talked to a couple of my mentors and my law firm, a couple of my friends that were off doing their own thing and kind of felt out like, what's the, if I'm not in a firm, what are you guys doing? And would you hire me in two years? And how would, you know, what would that look like? What would I make? How would that work? Whatever. So I kind of had a backup, like, a yeah, plan if I take this, this jump. Yeah. If I take this turn, 
do I have any chance of coming back to doing yes. what I used to do? That's, yeah. that's smart too, because that takes yeah. a little bit of the fear out because you really can't pursue your passion wholeheartedly if you're crippled by fear, because that's going to make you doubt your own, your own capability and your own ability. Am I good enough that I'm not going to fail? But if you say, you know what, yeah. even if I do fail, if you want to call it that, I don't even know, or if I don't achieve what I thought I would, then I can go back to this. I like that. You've created yeah, essentially research. a down the line safety net. Yeah. giving. I think the comfort level, the safety net for me was really big. I mean, everyone's going to have their own things, right? But for me, it was like the finance and the identity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're speaking my language right there. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't know who you are after you've done a certain job for yeah. 5, 10, 20 years, you know? Yeah. So um, what do you, do you have a favorite fairy tale? Um, well, I mean, I love stories. So I have a lot of favorite fairy tales, but probably... I would say my top two, if we're talking like old school, yeah, yeah, uh, like Disney type fairy tales, I love Beauty and the Beast because Belle Wright is the original bookworm. So, I love that, yeah. So you identify you with Belle. Love, <laughs> you have to love Belle. And yes. just the story of Beauty and the Beast, and we've talked about this offline too. I, I love it. And there's something about her kind heart seeing the beauty in the beast. And there's been so many really cool retellings, like we talked about. Um, uh, Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses, that mm -hmm. whole series, which is like one of my absolute favorite young adult fantasy retellings. I just, the whole storyline of Being the Beast, every time it's retold, I'll pick up any retelling. And then the other one that I am obsessed with is Cinderella. And I think I love Cinderella because the theme of it is kindness over everything, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're a kind person and you treat people well, and you're nice to animals, and I love animals, um, <laughs> eventually you will win out and you will, I don't know if you need to get your prince or whatever, but you know, you'll win, you'll, you'll beat the bad. Whatever guys. your fairy tale is, whatever, whatever is that, whatever that happily is. ever after is for you, yeah. your, gla your glass slipper will fit. <laughs> yes, and I've loved like every reiteration of Cinderella that I've ever seen, like the Disney movies, like Ever After with Drew Graham. I mean, Literally every single thing I've ever seen, plus the ones that don't come off, like you don't know they're retelling, but they are. Like, I'm really into Korean dramas. Yeah. Which is kind of a random thing because I don't speak Korean, but I watch it with subtitles. And there's um, Boys Over Flowers, which okay. is amazing. It's amazing. And it's a Cinderella, oh. like basically a Ooh. Cinderella retelling. I'm but yeah, check that out. a Cinderella book or a TV show or movie, like, I'm, I'm going to watch it my next book is a fairy tale retelling. So that's, Ooh. that's why I am also Ooh. obsessed. <laughs> Read them, write them. Um, you know, the, the interesting thing about going from one career to writing and the way they sort of superimpose is when you can take one skill into the other. And I love what you're doing by bringing in some of your your lawyer knowledge to help your fellow writers, yeah. especially in terms of, you know, if you're, if you're trying to self publish, or you're trying to figure out how to protect your content. What are you up to with, with your course? Yeah. So thank you so much for asking about that. So I'm super, super excited. And I don't know if, if at the end I'll give my like socials or whatever, but you yeah, can yeah. find me at Rep Talk Ross, R E K T O K R O S S. That's my pen name. And also my website is www.rectalkross.com. And if you go to the top, there's like a little bar that says courses because I'm about to launch courses teaching copyright to mm -hmm. authors, bloggers, and creatives. And mm -hmm. the whole okay. genesis of that is that, you know, as being part of this like bookstagram community, I'm in a lot of uh, writing Facebook communities. I, you know, SCBWI, which you, I don't know if you're in, if you're mm -hmm. not, you should be, it's awesome. Oh my God, you have to join, it's so great. So it's a society of children because you write YA children book authors and it's like a fantastic organization but through meeting all of these people i realized that creatives are like fantastic and they're very creative but the majority of them are not like you and i that are also like very business minded they that skill is like not something that they really go to it's like they want to just be doing all the creative stuff and they don't want to worry about the business stuff oh i don't like that Anybody who knows me, like admin and Servani do not go together at yeah, all in any yeah. way, shape, or form, simply because it's boring. Not because I can't it do boring. it, but because I'm like, yeah, I'll do it later. And then I forget. No, it is, it is boring. <laughs> and it's also overwhelming. Like if it's not, I mean, bookkeeping, like if that's not your thing and you want to write, right? Like that's a hard thing to wrap your mm -hmm. head around. You have to do that. 
But you do, and it's funny because I talk about this a lot, but in the golden age, which is fantastic, we now can do whatever we want, right? But there's a downside to that, and that's that everyone's doing it. A lot of people are, not everyone, but a lot of people are doing it on their own. So you're doing the YouTube, you're doing this live, you're doing the podcast, you don't have a studio who's putting it on. Or if you're self-publishing or an indie pub, you don't have Scholastic or, you know, Random House with their attorneys that are looking at everything. For right, you. right. So you, we have to take ownership, right? Like if we're going to live in this golden age, which is great when you put everything out there, we're responsible for our own business. And part of that is legal aspect. And copyright is like the number one protection that every creative needs to know about. But so many don't understand how it works and are getting taken advantage of. And I've seen this with my friends who are photographers and influencers on Instagram and they get their photos taken or they do a deal with someone mm -hmm. at a very small amount of money and they think like the deal is for one photo and then their photos on someone's website for right. 10 years. Um, right. Yeah. So people just don't understand how copyright works. Authors as well. They don't understand what can be copyrighted. They don't understand when something is stolen versus it's not stolen. And it's like an idea which can't be copyrighted. There's this whole confusion area and it's something that you have to know. Um, so I put together, I actually did intellectual property when I was yeah. in the So oh, I had this whole like background to go to and people were constantly asking me in groups, on calls, on Facebook, hey, Liana, you're a lawyer. What do I do about this? What do I do about this? And I was answering so many questions and I was hearing so many bad stories of people getting taken advantage of that I think the light bulb just kind of went off and people were like, why are you not, why are you not doing this? And I never wanted to do consulting like one-on-one -on -one, cause I didn't mm -hmm. want to go back to the law thing. Right. I escaped that. I escaped like in the fairy tale. So I didn't want to go right back. To it. <laughs> yeah. You escaped that tower. <laughs> <laughs> I escaped from the tower and I did not want to go back. But, um, I thought, you know, online courses, that's like the new thing and I'm taking them. I love them. I think they're amazing. And I thought, you know, why not? I should do an online course. So that's what I'm doing. So I have long, you know, long story short, I actually have a free master class that's coming out October 27th. Yeah. So you can register it. Anyone on this can register for it. Um, I'll give you a code as well. You can put up. And um, in the course, we'll talk about the five most common copyright mistakes that anyone, bloggers, writers, poets, creatives, everyone's making these mistakes and I'll teach you how to fix them. Perfect. And then, you know, there's a little sales pitch for the course as well. But even without signing up for the course, just that masterclass alone, I hope is incredibly helpful. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the whole thing about paying it forward, right? If you have a, a different skill set and you can help your other writers, if we can, you know, if, if I can help somebody not make the same mistakes that I did or waste time along the way, whether it's anything from finding the perfect fit for your agent um, to going at it without an agent, doing it alone, the editing yeah. process, I, I will give anybody gladly my knowledge that I found if that'll, yeah, if that'll I help them. And I feel like you're wired the same kind of way. I, I, yeah, I mean, you and I, like, we connected instantly over, like, DMs and stuff. I love helping people. I love yes. community. That's what storytelling is at the end of the day, right? It's like... It's giving. It's giving. It's giving, and it's creating a community through story, so... It's giving a piece of yourself and a piece of your heart. And so I know I promised I was only going to keep you until, until 8 o'clock, but we need to do this again often I soon. I would love that. You know, maybe we can even do um, a fun Q&A when, when your class launches or after the next course session that you do. We could do one where- I would love to bring you on. I have a Facebook group now. Yeah. Rec Talk Ross, the book nook. And um, it's really fun. We're talking like, we're actually reading Mexican Gothic. That's awesome. It's yeah. It's so good. So I need to ask Rec Talk Ross though. Where, what's the story behind Rec Talk Ross? Because uh, I've never heard that name before. So it's super random. When I was working at my law firm, uh, they were very gracious and beautiful about me writing on the yeah. side, but it was a little complex because on one hand, I'm like this trial litigator representing Fortune 500 companies. And on the other hand, I want to write like young adult romance. romance. Yeah. So they, didn't, they don't really go hand in hand. Our client, you know, the clients have been really confused and maybe a little weirded out about it. I don't know. So I actually decided to do a pen name and I was uh, home over Thanksgiving weekend with my brother and we were just like throwing stuff out, kind of messing around. And Ross is my mother's maiden name. And then Rec Talk is just Kotcher, which is my last name. It's just in oh, oh, with a letter. Oh. One letter is like messed up. Like I think I switched out the C and the H for the K. But yeah. we were, it was like a joke at first and it stuck. And now I love it because to me, it really represents like 
that move, that break free, that fairy tale of moving from one life of being like the lawyer trapped in so many ways and having to write under this pen name, right? Like Mulan, like having to dress up like the man and then breaking free and getting to actually do what I want to do, which is what I'm doing right now. Which but. is awesome. And I can't wait to see what you do next. And definitely, you know, we'll get you back in for maybe a fun, just straight Q&A where we pick your yes. brain about all things copyright or... Yes. Whatever. Marketing. Oh, I can do marketing now too. And email like newsletters that. and all that fun stuff for my... I, own. yes. I think we'll just have to have like a good... Now I'm brainstorming. I'm like, hmm, we need to have... You know, like they'll have like speed sessions, you know, everything yeah. from where we just sit down, I'm just gonna line everybody up and we'll just do like speed sessions of how to rock your brand as we head into the new year. Can I ask real quick before we go, because I know we're going at five, but I'd love to know what, 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 what are you writing? Can you share a little bit or is it like top secret? I can't yet. I'm, I'm co-authoring it with a, a good friend of mine named Dominique. I think she's on. Um, she's the one I was telling you also loves A Court of Thorn and Roses. So we're like yeah, spirits okay. all together writing. Um, so that's what's coming up next. And then of course, I, I, I'm always writing, you know, I'm one of those people yeah. too, where even when I'm writing one major project, I'm already dabbling in the next one. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that they stack up crazy. Like, you know, you, you publish that first book and it takes forever. You write it, you, you turn it out, let's say in six months. And then yeah. you, the process, it's like, dunk, dunk. Yeah. and three years later, there's a book on the shelf, which is amazing. About, forget about the querying and the, like all that garbage that takes years yeah like the writing is easy compared to like the whole traditional business side as well exactly that could be another yeah. line but yeah it could be because if you are a creative you can't help but not you you can't not write you know that's what you're yeah. going to do for fun that's it. if you're if you're a painter if you're a chef you're just going to do those things for fun regardless but then actually getting it out into the world oh that's a whole different story yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe that's what we can call it raise your book baby <laughs> I like it. I like it. How to raise your book, baby. Okay, well, I got to get you on my Facebook, too. This has been so amazing. This is so fun. I, thank you for joining us, and good luck with your course, and we will see you soon. Rec Talk for us. Thank you. Liani, Bye, thank you so much. Bye. Good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.